if everything goes well, we should be able to relaunch it in another month or two. Okay, <coughs> so for WooCommerce sellers that actually sell a marketplace also, once we have it, uh, we will have a plugin that actually support WooCommerce. Eventually, you can connect uh, to WooCommerce, then the product you upload there, you can actually synchronize to the Malaysia marketplace as well. Uh, to help your products right, to expose more potential clients. Okay? And if you want to know more about e-commerce stuff, uh, do like our page or like our Instagram or subscribe to our newsletter at ecinsider.9. Uh, okay? We previously we know an e-commerce title uh, because of our experience working in the field. We know a lot of people and uh, we try to do right uh, articles that have insights and talk about some numbers right, uh, regarding uh, uh, basically e-commerce. Okay, especially with the Malaysia focus and South Asia, I think we're going to touch on it. Okay, so let's not waste time. Let's, uh, you know, for most of the one right that already have commerce, right? Uh, I believe you already have payment gateway, right? Okay, uh, so you just want to find out, right, what others are available to you. Uh, but for those who haven't uh, had any, I want to share with you, right, basically how are you going to go about picking your own payment gateway? I think first question you have to understand, right? Uh, who are you selling to? Okay, your target market. Assume your target market is Malaysian. Then obviously you have to pick some payment gateway, right? That is uh, well known by Malaysian. Uh, I give you an example. If your target market today is US, and you try to set up a payment gateway directly connects to Maybank, and US people don't know anything about Maybank, actually it will cause a drop in the conversion rate. Okay, because people just don't trust uh, giving out their card details, right, to a payment gateway that not. So your target market actually matters. Huh? And then the, your currency, your target market actually use. So you want to support the currency, right? That can, they can transact that currency without any currency exchange happen, right? So let's say for most of Malaysian payment gateway, right? Uh, by default, it's ringgit ratio only. Okay, you talk about high pay, more pay, EGHL. Those are more commonly known, right? Okay, and if you want something more, a number of them, they do support multi-currency. Okay, but you actually need to actually pay a lot more and probably do a different API integration, right? Just to be able to do that. Oh, but multi currency gateway will make sense for you if you want to actually sell to Malaysia and probably sell to overseas as well from a single side. Uh, and I think the easiest way to actually go for it is once you pick a Malaysian gateway, you go for multi currency, you only support USD. Okay, that will actually make uh, the, the management much easier. Unless you have a very specific target in mind that, you know, I want to sell to Malaysia, sell to Australia only, then probably NYR, AUD, not to make sense. And as I mentioned, okay, okay how to avoid this? <laughs> not moving around, I think, like that. It should be okay. So is the payment gateway, uh, as I said, well known, uh, critical. If today you are selling overseas, I think the easiest option for you, okay, is definitely PayPal. Right, you don't need uh, any fee, any uh, paper process, right, to sign up initially. Okay, and you can straight away support multi currency. And how soon can you get the money into your bank account? So this actually matters more and more. Why? Because as a merchant, if you own WooCommerce, I believe you are merchant, you are selling something, right? Cash flow is important. Okay, you need the money coming fast to buy more goods, and you know the more sales you do, the more critical the cash flow is. No? You want the money to come back, back to buy stock, you have to pay off uh, the staff salary, etc. Okay? And uh, the limitation per account. You have to take note of this also when you apply for payment gateway because a lot of payment gateway as a start, they actually set a default limit one. Okay? Some are 12,000, some are 15, some are 20k. So assume you sell computers. Okay? So what computers normally cost how much nowadays? Maybe 1k for the 1k to 2k for low end. Right, you talk about higher end one, MacBook Pro 5, 6K onwards. So you sell about 3, 4 units, right? Then you can't transact already. Okay, so that's a limitation for those right, who have not applied for your account yet. Take note, they actually set a cap a limit right, per month for you. And then the settlement currency. So settlement currency uh, will be critical. Uh, but for most of you, if you are selling locally, you take regular pressure. And most of the local payment giving provider, they will actually settle for you in RF. So there's no currency loss in that, okay? But if you utilize the multi-currency giveaway they are using, most of the time, they will store it in USD, and they will settle to you in ringgit, and you will suffer a conversion loss, okay? So most of you, if you are selling higher margin product, you probably get annoyed, 
but you will sell low margin product, this will eat into your profitability. Uh, so take note on that as well. And then uh, normally for payment gateway fees, right, these are the basic fee structures. Uh, you can see whether they actually charge a one-time fee, do they have a recurring monthly fee or yearly fee, and probably the transaction fee, or, or what we call merchant called MDR, okay, merchant discovery. And the other fee like chargeback fee, remittance fee. Any anyone can understand what is a chargeback fee? Chargeback fee? Huh? Yes, it's still. Okay, for example, you sell something, then the customer complain, right? Uh, you know, I buy actually a black color underwear, you send me a red one. And and then they actually file a dispute with the bank, say, you know, good not as described. And then bank will throw a chargeback. And this chargeback fee, right, can be a very costly one. Uh, so to avoid this, basically just make sure you deliver as promised to the client. Okay? And uh, basically if the fraud rate uh, also will cost you chargeback as well. Some of the people giving charge as high as 80 to 90 USD per chargeback. Uh, so this is something no joke, but it might happen to you, you have got to treat it as a cost of doing business. Uh, that's how actually you should look at it. Remittance fee is sometimes they wire the money to account. They will charge an extra fee as well. Some from as low as few ringgit, some to 10, 20. Uh, you gotta take note of all the fee involved so that you can really calculate right, uh, what you're getting out of it. And talk about the basic feature of the payment gateway as well. Currency type, as I mentioned, if you are Malaysian, you apply for Malaysian gateway, the default is always Malaysian ringgit only. Okay? And take note, take note. If any of you right, are currently uh, not a registered company yet, meaning you haven't registered in ROC. Haven't. And then, do they allow you to apply for a payment gateway? Apart from PayPal? Ah, so take note. Today, if you want to do business, a lot of time, we start with a personal, right? On sale. And when you want to build an online store with WooCommerce, and you want to apply for payment gateway, they don't accept individual registration. So the minimum thing you should have is a company registered with ROC. So ROC, we talk about SoPro, Partnership, St. Ryan right? and now LLC. So you should have at least right, an ROC registered entity. I encourage all of you to have this one. So when you want to apply for payment gateway, you can submit the documentation as required. As well as when you go to Marketplace and start opening up account as well, even though most of them, they accept individual seller now, it will ease the process through of the ROC part, okay? Cut time. Malaysia, by default, we support Visa and MasterCard, okay? We don't support JBC, which is the uh, discovery card in the US one. And by default, they don't accept MX as well. Only these two cards, okay? So take note, other card, you can't really process, or even other charge card. Huh? And online bank transfer, this is a critical component, right, for most of the Malaysian payment giving. Today, you want to sell to Malaysia, you only need to support this card type and online banking. Um, most of the users, right, will not have a problem of making, a, you know, payment to you. Uh, so this thing is quite uh, well established. And of course, then comes the reporting part. Uh, so you're going to see uh, whether, right, does, does the payment giving the bank interface, right, provide the kind of reporting the sales volume, month-to-month -month comparison, year-to-year -year comparison that you require, or they even customize reporting for you or not. Some of them, they will do that, okay? And all of them, that actually support WooCommerce, obviously, they have to have this API. Huh? So without API, they are not a real payment for payment provider anyway. So they are extra thing, you know, uh, recently one of my clients actually checked with us, they want to do diaper subscription. So obviously, you need a recurring payment mode. Uh, so establish one, they all have this. And email payment, uh, basically this is not integrated with your WooCommerce store one. What if you have customers, right, that ask for some products, then they say, you know, I don't want to check out, I don't know how to check out from your store. Can you just email me, I click a link, I fill out my card detail, chuck, I transact for you. So email payment, right, uh, no brainer. And there are some, uh, one relation payment giver actually has something called product page. Means when you sign up the store, you can actually upload a product uh, to the, uh, the, the, the back end, right, of the payment gateway uh, admin control panel itself. 
and uh, it's a one page product. You have description. Everything is in one page. You can promote in your social media, Instagram, whatever the link. People click it. They just pay for the product. So it's very very simple. Uh, and this is this this innovative uh, features actually is by one of our local papers, like person here. Okay. So first, I think uh, most of you heard of okay? Anyone using IP now? So how is it? The survey? <laughs> so that means Shekai means lousy lah, huh? so Shekai means, okay? Old school, old school. Old school, but it works. All right, it can still do that. Okay, yes, this is what the feedback of the user, and this is what we are getting from most of our project as well. But don't forget, IBA today is a brand name. They are old school, but people look at it, right? People trust it. Okay, you go to DGV, and if you look at IPA, right, they power most of the e-wallet back end pop up nowadays. Okay, and they are the largest uh, third-party payment processors, right? Early inflation. They are the most aggressive in terms of if you if you use e-wallet, they don't talk about e-wallet. Most of the backend top up right are powered by them as well. And also they start supporting e-wallet as a payment option. Means if you look at I think they could, they have gone live with B Cash, Boost, uh, they have gone live with Touch and Go, and they're gonna go go live, right? We I think we chat pay right coming next week. Uh, so these these right uh, they have a brand. They have uh, basically right. If you utilize them as old school as they are, uh, people will just pay via uh, I think the trust is there. Huh? Okay, even uh, when a lot of people call in right for us like right, they, they don't know what's that. They just automatically ask for it. Okay, so I think and lately right the double eleven. Any of you like uh, you know uh, shop online? Most of you. Yes. So do you pay payment problem? Yes. Huh? All right. So a lot of people problem, right? Uh, because IP is down, FPS is down. Uh, and uh, another thing I want to highlight is, right, because the volume that they are processing, and uh, eventually, right, after this disaster, they're going to pick it up. So they don't even provide that big one. I actually have one advantage. Means as more volume they process, they have to beef up their own infrastructure to scale up. Uh, and when you have volume that time, right? Uh, hopefully, the next round you'll be able to handle it better. Okay. So that's for IP. For and IP, right? Uh, every payment given I talk about here, uh, you gotta assume, right? They already have a uh, WooCommerce uh, uh, extension, right? Built in one. Uh, and most of them they have uh, official one. Okay. You just need to request for them, even though they don't publish it online. So for MoPay, anyone using MoPay here? You using MoPay as well. But, huh? Different guys. Huh? Different guys. Different guys. How do you find it? I find it better than this. Uh, the interface, right? Okay. Apart from interface, better what else? Integration. Integration. Yeah. Yes. Simpler, smoother as well. So Mope is the second largest player in Malaysia. Um, IP and Mope combined, right? I believe they command a market share of about 70 to 80 percent. Okay. So these are the two uh, really well established players. So apart from like what you mentioned, the UI is better. The reporting is uh, a lot of customer feedback, way easier and better as well, basically in terms of UI. And they have additional features right that you cannot ignore. One of them is called MOL Cash. Have any of you made payment using MOL Cash before? Buy online, you know, I don't have credit card, I don't have debit card, I don't trust it, and I go to 7-Eleven or 99 Street Mart, right? I pay cash. Any of you try using this kind of payment method before? No. So according to the statistic, right, MOL Cash is the third largest non-card payment option after Maybank to you and after CIMB bank transfer. Okay? And I believe this statistic is uh, published and shared out by MOL Pay from their own transaction alone. So this is an interesting thing. If you do something, right, if you sell to a market that is non-card user one. Right? Okay, or they don't trust one. You supporting this payment, right, will actually help you to increase your sale. Okay, I give you an example, right? They, they found out a very interesting scenario using more payment. There are some large travel uh, site when they start support, supporting a well cash. What actually happened is, right, those people, they use the app, they go to 7 Eleven there, they start placing order for the traveling package. Okay? And then, in front of the counter there. After that, they generate this code, right? Then they let the counter scan, and they pay cash. 
all the government. And once you pay cash over the government, the, the update right is almost in real time. So the table option get, you know, the status of the order get updated. And apart from that, they also work with uh, B card. You know this uh, B infinite. Okay, you can actually right opt to enable people who actually come to your site. You can tell them we are using okay, and when you check out right, uh, you will get extra points, uh, loyalty points right, added to your B infinite card as well. So this is something you can tap on. Okay. Then EJHL? Anyone using EJHL here? No. You know EJHL? <coughs> so EJHL basically is by GHL Wuhan. <coughs> oh, they are one of the listed companies in Malaysia. And I believe right they are the third largest players right after IPA and OK. Okay? So uh, what I can say is they have one interesting plan. Okay, they divided their plan, right? They let you okay, what if you have a lot of transaction volume? You already know. So what they can do is, right, they allow you to pay upfront a fee, then enjoy a very, very low rate. For example, if you know that your transaction volume right, is more than 100,000 a month already, you can just pay them 10,000 to set up first to enjoy a rate as low as 1.8%. So it's below 2. And normally they offer this kind of rate on, uh, you know, marketplace players or people that process a lot of volume. Right? So you got to do some calculation. And I share with you this tip, right, so that once you know you have the volume, the whole point is right. You can actually then go and talk to most of the payment giving provider that, hey, I have this volume, I want lower rate, and I'm willing to pay upfront first, and then you calculate the savings you are going to save over time. Okay, and most of them, right, uh, they have such a plan catered for you one. Okay, provided you have to know that uh, you got such volume. Okay, and of course, EJHL they also have a similar payment option like MOL Cash. Um, they let uh, customers, right, you know, if you go to a lot of uh, petrol station or what, they have this ePay terminal. They allow payment to be made via ePay terminal as well. Then people can just place order online, go to the counter, make it an ePay terminal payment, get updated back uh, to your e-commerce store. Okay? And then, bill please. Anyone using? Oh, quite a number. Huh? What, what are they known for, bill please? What are they known for? Why the why why you use them? Easier to register, easier to get started. As easy as can help, correct? You just need an email account. So uh, easy, very neat, very clean interface. And most of the time, right, if you want to use the place, their strength really lies in online bank transfer. Okay? And they are unique in a way that they are probably the only one that do pop up. Okay? They're like easy buster. You have to store put money into the account first. And every transaction, they will deduct the cheapest fee one is one ringgit and 50 cents. Okay? And the other thing about bill please is, remember I shared with you about the importance of getting the money back fast. So how fast bill please? Bill please user, how fast? Uh, I shall check with my account department. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this guy don't care about cash flow, he's rich. Huh? So, it's normal payment giving. Most of the time, the transaction time is like this. Monday to Sunday, okay? So they will remit the payment to you on Thursday or Friday. Next week. Okay? This one, P plus one. P plus one means what? Transaction happened today, tomorrow the money will be in your account. In your bank account. Automatically. Okay? So that's the main thing. And if you sell high value item, okay? You count, uh, let's say, right, if the payment given charge you 2%, if you sell 1,000 ringgit one item, how much it costs you? 20. Right? This one, 1 ringgit 50 cents. Yes. So, the 18 ringgit 50 cents, it's a puntong la. Okay, extra. Huh? So, you really need to know the mechanism and actually how to tap into it. It's critical. And there are people, uh, a guy called Hasro, uh, run a book cafe one. He actually developed a simple plugin that let you switch in between, like this for WooCommerce store. If you exceed a certain amount, they switch to bill print automatically as a payment option to save the cost of transaction, like just what I mentioned. Uh, this is something you can do, okay? And uh, like the gentleman here also, uh, I think most of you, if you actually sell online, you should have at least two accounts ready. 
Okay? The reason is, if one band once got problem, you can switch on another one without impacting your problem. Okay? Always have more than one uh, payment gateway account. Now, maybe do you pay? Anyone using it? None. And why is nobody using it? Do you even know that this product exists? Huh? Okay, maybe do you pay? Uh, actually, right, they launched this uh, years back, few years back. Initial target is for bloggers. You know, when blog was very popular at that time, there was this thing called blog shop, if you remember. Okay? And the problem with blogger is, right, a lot of people make online bank transfer, and you look at all the transactions, right, you don't know who, who made which payment because all the amount are the same one. Okay? So they, they start developing this product, they allow additional field to be captured, name, you know, order ID, right? So that from there you can actually match back which customer actually make the payment. Okay? Then later on, uh, last year, hello, hello? Last year, they actually uh, redeveloped uh, you know, this payment to you, right, into a full fresh API capability. The good news is for you, they do support WooCommerce, it's not published, you have to request for that. The zero application fee, and guess how much per transaction? Any idea? One. Free. What? How much? No. <laughs> not going to be free, huh? Right. Initially it's free. Initially, yeah. 50 cents. 50 cents. So, the only downside for this is, let me share with you, application process might be a little bit cumbersome. Okay? Secondly, they only accept Maybank to you user. Okay? So it's not FBA or my bank transfer, no. Only maybe to you, user. But remember, 50 cents only. And this is the lowest cost in the market. I guarantee you. Huh? And they already support WooCommerce. Huh? You can check out their website already. Okay? Then we have this Sunang Pay. Anyone using? So you like what do you like about Sunang Pay? Oh, I just started. Just started? Just started. I don't like it because not so sonang to do what. Sometimes the name doesn't. <laughs> okay, I, I think okay. We we I currently I don't have uh, experience dealing with sonang pay yet. Uh, but I know sonang pay ball. Okay, and uh, basically a few things about sonang pay. Uh, and I have friends that actually utilizing sonang pay right for their own store. It's very low cost to start up. Uh, their st their setup fee is as I think as low as two hundred ringgit. Okay, so it's cheap. And I think by default, their transaction rate is 2.5% uh, for credit card, 1.5% for FBX, which is also very, very competitive uh, if compared to others. But I think the cool thing about Sanang Pay is, right, is this. The remittance, even for credit card, is very fast. So, on one of my friends that actually utilizing for his WooCommerce store, uh, the payment, they, they pay you back twice a week. Okay, they process for you, two times. Remittance a week. Of course, most of them they have a minimum amount of one hundred ringgit you have to have in the bank account. And secondly, right, Sanang Pay, if you are selling on social only today, remember just how I talked to you about the product page feature? They are the only one that has it. Okay? So you can upload an individual product, you know, straight away you put a link, then you use a bit lead, right, track how many people click on it. People go to the site, people make payment, and set boom done. Uh, but of course, it's not a full fresh uh, shopping cart function. But it's a single product page. It's good enough for you to sell, you know, an individual item, right, for a lot of time. Take order. Uh, it was very, very simple. Uh, check out Sunang Pay. Pay this. I, who, who, who heard of Pay this here? Uh, yeah, none of you are good. Uh, they just won an award on it. So, basically for Pay this, right, they are very newcomer uh, to the market. Uh, you can check out their website. They already had live WooCommerce store running on Paytips. Oh, I talk about Malaysia one. So they are newcomers, a few things. They try to compete on uh, support. They claim their support is from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Okay, that's the first thing they do. Secondly, they currently offer a plan that offer zero transaction fee one. You don't need pay for the ringgit. You use them, the transaction fee is zero. Of course, there are T and C inside. Huh? So do check with them. Buy more 
and they, they say they are very, very flexible. They will be able to probably right, customize report and even do some customization right, for your unique need. Oh, because small one, normally they are hungry. Oh, five more minutes. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, let me jump. PayPal, shall I skip this? Oh, you will look. Huh? So, okay, on PayPal, right, uh, one thing I want to share. Uh, PayPal is the easiest for you to sign up to take my international payment. Uh, and also, the myth is, right, if a user without PayPal account, they can't pay. Actually, they can. But PayPal never tell you, right, how much they actually can. My experience is, right, if a user try to buy something from you, it's more than USD 100, PayPal will prompt them to register for a account. Okay? That's from my experience. But the real um, criteria, the thing they collect in order to trigger this, uh, force you to achieve using a registered payment account, we never know. Okay? Because they are handled by different things. Okay? So, quick things, right? International, remember, we know payment giving uh, in that particular country. Uh, I'll start with PayPal for you, all of you. Uh, for Malaysia, okay, most of it just now I say one, okay, the process Malaysia. And bank your account first thing about cash flow, or if you sell to both, apply for two payment giver account or multi currency, right, on the same payment giver account. So, okay, I don't have much time left. E wallet, how many of you are using it? Don't be shy. Uh, this group should be more tech savvy, one, right? So, how's your e wallet experience so far? Good, bad, useful, useless. Uh, so, I just want to share with you currently, right? Uh, these are all the active e wallet players in the market. Uh, with the exception of this one, the Kerda Pay here, okay? They, they have not published their apps online. Uh, this, this is the thing I come out with. Uh, all this has gone live, and they are the only uh, licensed e money players, right? Uh, currently, they have published an app in the market. Okay, and I want to share with you a lot. Of, you probably don't know this. Uh, uh, a lot of people confused, right? Uh, about this as well. What is an e wallet, and what is considered an e money? So let's take a look at Starbucks app. Okay, so is it e wallet? Yes, just like our wallet, huh? Can store things. Huh? Is it e money? Yes. Why? Because it's a lot top up. Okay? You pay them cash, they store a digit in your account, which can be used to trade with them. Okay? Is it open loop? Open loop means apart from Starbucks, that you use the money inside, right? To pay Tesco, to pay Aeon, or even to buy from you. If you're utilizing payment giving they support you wallet. The answer is no. Okay? So they don't require a license e-money license from bank accommodation. Okay, you have to fulfill all these criteria. Oh, this is something a lot of people probably don't know. And is it linked to a card scheme? Meaning, right, this e wallet thing, does it tie to a Visa, Master, or China Unipay? The answer is no. So, yes, fake. A lot of people think they're actually e-money provider. Actually, they're not. Why? e wallet, yes, you know, because you can tie your credit card to it or debit card to it. Is it e-money? No. You can't top up, okay? You can't top up, they only tie to your card. Every time you're using a fake pay, you are actually triggering right, the, the credit card pull the import authentication in real time. They don't actually store any value. <coughs> is it open loop? Obviously it is. Because, right, tied to a card, whatever they actually accept a payment, pay, pay QR code, right? You can just use a bit to scan it and it'll trigger the pull from your card or the authentication, uh, the credit info. Is it linked to a card scheme? No. Okay? And then you take a look at Maybank QR Pay. Any active Maybank QR Pay user here? No. Huh? QR Pay, you, you like it more than the typical e wallet like Boost? Why? Hmm? Okay, that's the thing also. It's also very dangerous. Don't you think so? Why is it being hacked? God. And this is not safe by me, right? No. They are security experts that I mentioned before. Payment right that tied directly to a CASA account, current account and saving account. What if it's being hacked? Okay? So uh, the risk right uh, is that. Okay? Then you have boost. Uh, obviously, wallet, yes. Money you can top up, yes. Open loop, yes. Is it linked to any card scheme yet? No. 
But those, they are going to support China Union Pay. Oh, they have announced that. So, uh, imagine if they link up with China Union Pay, whoever try and make payment on every terminal that already support CUP, stand for China Union Pay. So, both are adopting a different strategy. Oh. And then, uh, Big Pay, uh, MP Wallet, and also Merchant Trade Money. So, these are what we call uh, card based e wallet. Oh, they are licensed e money players as well. And what makes them different is, right, whatever they are doing, they are currently linked to a Visa prepaid card or Master prepaid card. Any big pay user here? I will write. So currently, you get the contactless card. So, so when they are writing on the Master card network, the good thing about card based e wallet is they don't have to acquire a new merchant. Any merchant that already accept credit card, debit card, you can utilize your actually big pay card to pay for it. Okay? But of course, the, I think the downside is, right, you still need a card. If not, uh, they don't go and acquire merchants, they don't have the QR code, right, uh, for the merchant for you to make payment. Then, uh, you can't just carry a phone around without your card. Uh, you still need card to actually make payment to them. Oh. So far, any question? I think we're almost time out already, right? Okay, let me wrap up the, the last slide oh, for you. I think this is something important uh, for all of us to know. Uh, the ICPF, right, uh, basically is an uh, interoperability credit transfer framework by Bank of Graph, okay? And what you actually intend to do uh, is actually, right, make sure in the future, bank and non-bank, right, have a shared network platform. Everyone can access to it, right? Um, then without prejudice, you know, so that not bank and non bank, we can transfer money to each other's right easily. Okay, that's the whole idea. And to actually enable this, they need a system. They call RPP, real time payment platform. And this RPP right is being developed by Paynet. So Paynet is the share platform uh, basically operator. Then the first thing they already done is the this one. Have you recently heard of? Uh, do it now. So do it now, right, is the first implementation of the national addressing database. Okay? What you can do now, do it now. Now if I want to transfer money to you, I need a bank account detail. Right? But for do it now, the idea is I only need to remember your mobile phone or your IC or your company registration number. Then these features right, will be available when we log into our internet banking. Be using do it now, we just key in your mobile number, and if your mobile number already tied to a certain CASA account, my money transfer is done. Okay? So do it now is going to be launched by end of I think December this year. Okay, you you see more of it. Oh, this is the first implementation of the NAD. Secondly, is the interoperable QR code. You see one of the issues now is right, every so many wallet players, everyone have their own QR code, right? Then, if you have a QR code, uh, I mean, if you need to launch a different app, just to scan the QR code, just to make payment to them. So this interoperable, right, plan to solve one thing. In the future, you use Boost, you can scan payment QR code, and the money can be transferred to them. Okay? And of course, this only applies to larger players, means they are looking at, if you have more than 5% market share, or you have more than 500,000 uh, euro user, you have to apply this. Okay, but this I end this here. Thanks. Oh, I can't show you.